Welcome back, guys. You're with Desi again in another ministry moment. And today we're on the topic of bouncing back from regrets and mistakes. I have two wonderful guests here with me who are going to go ahead and introduce themselves right now. Um, so I'm Crystal Day. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm an author and a speaker, a coach. Um, I'm a podcaster. And, um, in terms of ministry, I, I mean, for me, I think ministry is just serving, you know, just seeing just serving with a heart to glorify God. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't have any big ministry past any church or anything, but I see everything that I do as, you know, as unto the Lord. So, um, yeah, that's really about me. I'm a Jesus girl. I'm not going to lie. Like, I really do love Jesus Christ and, um, you know, I desire to please him with my heart. So, my name is Prophet Sarah Smith. I am the co-pastor of Light of the Gentiles International I am a fashion designer, I'm a stylist, I'm a conference host. I love to pray, I love to intercede on God's, on the behalf of God's people. What else? Um, Prophetess has many hats, but I guess we can leave it there. <laughs> it's truly an honor to be in the presence of both women of God today. So we are talking to the Esau's today. Esau sold his birthright for a plate of food. And by the time he realized what had happened, it was already too late. And now we see Esau feeling as though Jacob tricked him when really and truly, if we're going to look at it in the realest sense, he did not. He took advantage of an opportunity, but he didn't trick him. He laid everything on the table and it was what it was at that point in time. But professors, I want to start with you. Is there, when once we rec recognize that we've made a mistake, is there something that's different with us bouncing back mentally versus spiritually? Yeah, um, I think the mentally aspect of it is realizing, you know, because most times when persons are at a place where, you know, they've, they've, they've failed and, you know, they feel like they cannot come back from their failures, failures and the mistakes that they have made, there is this warfare in the mind, the battle is in the mind, I've already messed up, no one is going to accept me, my church is going to treat me this way, people are going to be disappointed. The mental aspect of it is important for persons to realize that you have sinned against nobody but God that's that's point blank you have sinned against nobody but the Lord and you know it is important for them to understand that they are not under the law law but they're under grace so the grace of God is always there to restore them and to bring them back so that mental aspect you know they have to get to that point that realize that listen I've made a mistake but at the end of the day I serve I a forgiving God a God that is always extending his grace to me so you know I have to accept his word and what he has said about me in that regard spiritually oftentimes when persons make mistake there is this thing that they don't want to pray anymore they don't want to go to services anymore they don't they want to stay away from church folks you know i think it, that's the level of condemn that's the level of condemnation but to bounce back spiritually you have to begin to do what you did before you fell you know, um, that, that is going to help you to get back to that place. So if you were a praying person, get back into prayer. If you were a worshiper, get back to worship. You know, if you were always at church, Bible study, prayer, prayer meeting, you were always in the know when it comes on to your church, get back into that momentum because it's going to help you to build you back spiritually. Yeah. So I love that you said that because right now already somebody's feeling encouraged already somebody who felt as though the mistake was the end of it that's the end of the story i can't i can't move past this already we're telling you you hear prophetess telling you that this is not the end don't put a full stop where a comma is and don't end the story where it's just probably the end of a chapter right but i want to ask is it, is it really important to bounce back is it really important to move past this and why of course, because if you don't move past this, this is going to be a shadow 
or I would say a wall that the enemy is going to use to stop you, you know, because not bouncing back, you're going to wrestle with condemnation. You're going to wrestle with all the negative thoughts and your momentum and your drive. It's not going to be the way it was because it's going to cut your zeal. You know, it's going to cut that level of excitement and, 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 and how you were infused about God. That's not going to be there. So you have to get, you have to really get from that place of condemnation and that place where you have made a lot of mistakes and failures and really push past that and press um, beyond that because if not you're gonna be stuck you know purpose is you're gonna, you're gonna allow your purpose just to go away from you because you're you're seated at the place of condemnation okay crystal i want to jump over to you why do we think that it's so hard we find that a lot of young persons they will be in the church and they'll be active and then the moment they make a mistake like prophetess said they take that back bench they don't wait for anybody to put them there anymore they take it for themselves why is it so hard why does it seem so hard for young persons to bounce back I, you know I, i'm listening to prophetess and i'm like why didn't i have these words when i needed to bounce back <laughs> when I got pregnant in church, you know? <laughs> but, um, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, we have to be real. Uh, the truth is most of us depend on the appraisal of people. That is the truth. We, when we, that's why we post certain things on social media because we want to hear, you know, yeah, that girl. That's why we are very, um, you know, the kind of picture we put up on our WhatsApp because you want to hear, you know, you look nice. So, uh, the truth, when it comes on to why people tend to just go, it's almost like you are always looking at what people will say about you. And most times you're not thinking about who you are in Christ. And Prophet has said it, you know, this is why we, we really need to get to a place where uh, a desire um, to please God is greater than the desire and the approval of man and the clap of man. Um, at the end of the day, if you truly love God, Jesus Christ, or if you truly desire to please him, then even in embarrassment, even in guilt, even in shame, it's almost like you will just humble yourself to go back to him because you know he's more important. And I'm happy Crystal mentioned it. So we're seeing that these women of God are not just saying it because it sounds good, but they've experienced it. As I hear Crystal saying that she was pregnant, and she had to bounce back from the shame and the regret of that. And you understand? But I want to ask you, Crystal, what three lessons have you learned from that experience? Uh, so initially, I think, uh, you know, Prophet said, said it where you, is when you are in such a situation, you must try to go back to a place where, you know, where you were before um, or practice some of the principles before. One of the things that I had to be real with myself when I was pregnant in church is that um, I was just doing church. I was just going to church. I, I don't know if outside of getting pregnant, if I would have gotten to a place where I realized that I did not have a true relationship with God, I was just doing church. So one thing I learned during that situation was when everybody else would have forsaken me, I, with my heart and my soul, I believe that God was still with me. And it was through that, that I really learned what true worship and having a true relationship with Christ look like. I'm not sure if you understand what I mean. Um, secondly, uh, I think I learned that shame not kill you. I, I, that's the best way I can put it. The truth is, I was embarrassed. The truth is, the situation that was going on, you know, pregnant in my community, this girl is a role model, plus not she's a Christian. It did not look good. But, and it, I felt like, boy, you know, you don't want to walk on the road. But then after I really realized, oh, shame really can't kill you. You know, like it can't. It, it, it's just a mental thing. So once I realized that I started to stop feeling so shameful, I realized nobody was saying, nobody was gossiping about me. Nobody was, you know, like. And the final thing I would say I learned, um, which my past at the time, you know, God be glory, um, you know, that he understood grace and stuff. He said to me, don't hide your sin. Don't hide. Come and like at the church, we had to go in front of the church and tell them that we were pregnant, right? Um, that, that was long before baby. And to the average person in the church, they would not do that. And the average girl would just come, 
they, they would just stop coming to church. And at the time, I felt like, I guess because I used to go to a, all girls, a Catholic school, I kind of felt uh, at Alpha, we had, when we disobeyed, we had consequences. So I felt like this is a church rule. Why not follow the church rule? So I went up there, you know, and he said to me, if you tell them that you're pregnant, by the time that your belly starts show, what am I going to talk say? What am I going to say? You know, it's almost like you have to share your dirt so nobody can cuss. And I think that has definitely um, changed how I see secrets, lies, and guilt and stuff like that. I love it. Thank you for your honesty. And thank you for, you know, just not being afraid to speak the truth. There's so many truths that other people have and they know it's the truth and they're not willing to admit it. You understand? But prophetess, I would love if you could share a testimony of something that you bounced back from. I would say, and I just got saved. I had a, a lot of issue with sexual immorality. And, you know, the average church girl, you love God, but you keep on slipping. And I remember I did a 40 days of, 40 days fasting. And what led me to that fasting, I, at the time I was going to church on a Saturday and I just got tired of being at the altar, repenting for the same thing over and over. So, you know, I gave God an ultimatum and I was like, God, if you don't know, meet me after this fasting, I'm not doing this church thing anymore. You know, the guilt of me messing up and, you know, coming back to, to you over and over again for the same thing. That itself was killing me. The sin was killing me, but had to go back to God every minute. That was even more damaging for me because I truly love God. And, you know, I never understood why was it so hard to stay consecrated? Why was it so hard to stay sanctified? So I went on that 40 days fasting and, you know, long story short, I was delivered from a lot of sexual immorality, a lot of things that, you know, I was born to, um, that was, that was, you know, contributing to my lasciviousness and the lifestyle I was living and being promiscuous and stuff like that. And I remember after that, you know, individuals that, you know, that knew my story and knew, you know, where I was coming from and the struggles that I, I had, you know, I had to just get to a place that, you know, that was no, that's no longer me because oftentimes persons don't, they don't see the process that you're going through. They don't see the deliverance. They don't see the consecration. They don't see, you know, all the things that you have gone through to get to that place of sanctification. They will see you as the past, the past individual that they they remember you from your 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 mistakes and your mishaps so i had to get to a place that you know as crystal crystal said that god's opinion is more weightier than anyone's opinion and what god was doing in me was completely different from where i'm at because people will always see you from where you're at so you know i had to really bounce back from that those mistakes and understand that i am not that girl anymore you know i'm changed i'm transformed because god actually did meet me after the 40 days of fasting and transform my life some of the things that i was struggling with it became absolutely easy because i had a I had a past of sexual immorality and that was biting me because I wasn't delivered. You know, certain doors that I opened before I got saved, they weren't closed. They weren't, they, they, there were things that were not renounced, were not denounced. So the, the devil, the enemy really still had access to a portion of my life. And going through that fasting, um, you know, I was, I was introduced to a deliverance minister that I never understand. I didn't know what was deliverance. I was saved. They didn't know nothing about it. I thought that you save and you just sweetly save and everything all right and you know he really walked me through deliverance and then after that I realized my in my desires change things that I wanted to do I honestly didn't want them to do want to do anymore and things that were you know it seemed as if it, it had power over me you know I was no longer susceptible to it because I went through the process of deliverance. So I had to understand that I am a new creature. I'm not my past. And I had to really bounce back from the mistakes that I made. Mark you, some persons that, you know, that I made mistakes with and, and did a lot of stuff. They didn't see me as delivered Sarah. They did, they, they, they still saw me as the person that you know made so much mistakes but I had to rise above that and rise above the opinions of men and understand that God was indeed doing a new thing in me so you're watching this and I hope that you're already seeing that you're 
mistakes are not because you're less than it's not because you can't get it right it's not because you'll never get it right but understand that sometimes your mistakes is what it takes for you to see god for who he really is it's what it takes for you to go to that next level of relationship with god that he desires to get with you so prophetess for somebody who you know know that they've now heard this for because we're human and we're prone to mistakes we're prone to doing things that we will regret afterwards but what should be the mindset the moment we realize that we've made a mistake what should the mindset be in order to keep our walk going i would give you the example of the prodigal son that asked for his inheritance before the actual time you know the bible said he spent all his money and then he was at a place where he was eating the pig's food food then he came to himself and realized that listen, what am I doing here? You know, I have a palace, I have, I have money, I have wealth, you know, and I can go back home. You know, we have to get to that place where we understand that where we're at, God is not finished with us. Although we have made some mistakes and we're in some current circumstances, is not anybody place us there is our own actions or our own rebellion, our own decision, that you have a father that is there with his arms wide open as the prodigal son's father, waiting to keep a party for you because you have returned waiting to accept you you know although you have made some mistakes and you have blundered and you have erred that you know he's willing to take you back so you have to get to that place where you say listen and this is this is the thing I, I see a lot of persons that and it's in the church a lot of persons make mistake and they blame pastor then blame the deacon then blame the evangelist, then blame the Sunday school teacher, then blame everybody and they don't take responsibility for themselves. The prodigal son understood that, listen, I'm the one that made this mistake and I'm going to take pride because a lot of persons' pride will cause them not to bounce back. You're too proud. You're too proud to say that you're the one that made the mistake. You're too proud to, to apologize. So you, you're rather dead. <laughs> you're rather dead than go back and bounce back. But that's that's very that's a that's a dangerous place so you have to get to that place where you understand that listen i'm, I'm the one that made mistake i did what i wanted to do i enjoyed it it did nice and it got me to this place so you know let me get it back together and keep it moving with the lord so you have to be honest you have to be transparent and you know and get back and get up and say listen Let's do this thing all over again. I was the one that made the mistake and let me learn from this. But you have to get to that place where you can admit and, and say, listen, I'm the one that did it and let's keep it moving. Yeah. So in order to keep your walk going, as you hear prophetess say, don't get stuck in the place where you stepped outside of the covering. Don't get stuck in the place where you stepped outside of the grace, right? You have to now be able to, to really and truly say, I made a mistake. This is not, if Esau had said, you know, I gave up the birthright for a plate of food because I felt like I could not eat. I felt like I was going to die. Jacob didn't trick me, right? Esau walked around with that to the point where he wanted to kill his own brother. His brother had to flee. You understand? And Jacob really didn't do anything to, to Esau. If we're really going to look at this thing, forget about what you've been taught in the past. Let's forget about those sermons, right? Go back read it and i want you instead of seeing jacob and esau see yourself see the situation that you've encountered you understand but i want to ask because there are some persons who are assigned especially when we're going to look at prophetess who is a shepherdess over sheep you are assigned to persons to help them move beyond their mistakes what how do we better equip these persons to deal with these, especially when you're going to be looking at persons who are not willing to admit that, yes, it was me. Some people blame the devil for everything, even when he's innocent. You understand? You as a person who is, you know, tasked with the responsibility of helping people overcome, how do we better equip these persons? Crystal, I want to throw that over to you. I mean, you know, it's funny because, um, you know, when bef before Prophetess started to answer the question, what I, I was thinking, uh, the truth is there are mistakes, um, but there are things, when, it, when you think about it, there are things that happen to us. For example, you have been molested or there are things that happen to us that scar us, that has caused a shame and a guilt. Um, there are things that we have made um, 
just mistakes in terms of, you know, probably, for example, I did an abortion at 16 and at 16, the truth is where my mindset was, I didn't know Christ, I didn't know the repercussions, you just kind of did it, <laughs> you know, because they thought it was the right thing culturally. Um, and then you have persons that are in church that are truly willfully walking out sin, that are, they know that it's wrong, but they're choosing the pleasure over God all the time. So, one, I think, as you mentioned, we have to get to a place where we're honest with ourselves to say, okay, if it was someone that did it to us, okay, it's not my fault. I didn't do anything to cause that. But because of who Christ is and what he has done, I'm not defined by that. If it's something that, you know, you, you really and truly made a mistake and you look at it and say, boy, you know, I, 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 I did this upon, um, you know, just as, like Esau, just because of the situation, then be honest with yourself. And, you know, sometimes you make these decisions, uh, mistakes, because you lack knowledge. You know, people struggle because of the lack of knowledge. Um, so how can I grow in knowledge of who Christ is? How can I spend time in the world to know who um who I need to become so that I don't make the, the decisions again. And then if you are willfully choosing to sin, you, if you're not in a place of repentance, constant repentance, um, and not three more, oh God, forgive me, but no, so tomorrow night I'll go back there. You know, um, in my case, when I got, like I said it to my pastor, boy, you know, I may mean, I struggle with sex, but the truth is I wasn't struggling, but they just loved the man more than Jesus. <laughs> and until I was willing to be real with myself to say, am I going to always choose this man over Christ? Then I, there was no change for me. So I think I gave different scenarios and different ways, but definitely one, being honest with yourself. Two, um, God knows the truth already. So you're being honest with yourself and be honest with him right um get to a place of repentance whether and then if it's something that someone has done to you you know that the power of forgiveness forgiving yourself forgiving the person and then just being open to accepting christ's forgiveness and to walk in who you, and the final thing is walking who you are in christ that's the truth like yeah we are ministers we're all of these things but most of all we are god's child we're god's daughter and even if they strip all the other titles from from us um you know at the end of the day i can come back because i'm his I'm his. Amen. And if you're watching this, and probably your mistake and your regrets is not necessarily, you know, sexual or any one of the big sins as we categorize them, but there's some persons who got bad advice. They got bad advice about persons, business partners, friendships, and you messed a good thing up. You're not able to reap benefits from that partnership, from that relationship, because who you have in your ear guiding you, advising you, though it may be good advice, it's not necessarily godly advice. And so we see in the word of the Lord where Esau went to, to his father and he's saying, even me, God, even me, bless even me, father. There must be something, another blessing for me. And I love what Isaac said to him. Isaac said, when it shall come to pass that you have dominion, you'll be able to break his yoke from off your neck. So I want to encourage you right the Esau's that this is not the end of the story another blessing is coming now Esau might have looked on it to say if it's not the birthright blessing it it must be a lesser blessing so prophetess I want to ask you what happens when God gives us a second chance he gives us another friendship gives us another relationship another job another position and we feel as though it's lesser than the one that we messed up with how do we deal with that you know it is important for us to to understand that we serve a grace a god that is full of grace and full of mercy and if you have come to that place as we've been talking about you know realizing that you're the one that made mis the mistakes if you should really think about it your mistake would have um rewarded you some deep problems and some deep issue so just the fact that you have a chance to get any blessing at all <laughs> there should be a level of you know you're grateful because person have made mistakes and they don't get nothing and they're not even at the place we are even to say you know let me let me let me get another blessing much less you know any at all because you have you are, you serve a god that is is full of mercy and is full of grace 
So, you know, persons need to be grateful that God has given them a second chance. It may not be at the level, at the level and the dimension that they wanted it to be, but at the end of the day, he still extended his mercy. And, you know, you have, you have received some level of reward in which you should have received none, none at all. When you think about the story with David and what he did with um, Beth Bathsheba, the Bible said that, you know, God killed the, 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 the child and David got up, went into the house of God, worshipped, and then went and ate, comfort his wife. And then he went into her, as the King James says so gracefully. We know what that means. The Bible said that, you know, God had mercy on David and would have caused the same Bath Bathsheba that the child died from. Um, to grant them and uh, grant him a second chance with Solomon, and Solomon names me gave the name is Jedidiah, really means God's beloved. So we realize that although David made a mistake, God was graceful because David continued. David understood himself and said, "Listen, I'm the one that made the mistake because when his his servants were like, you were fasting, you didn't eat the child dead. Why you get up and you eat now? You know, and he was like." The child is dead. I can't go to him. You know, he, he can't come back, but I will go to him. Like, there's nothing I can do now because David understood that I'm the one that made the mistake. And what God did was a result of my mistakes and make mistake and david getting to that place would have seen that god would have even rewarded him, rewarded him with another child you know so that is absolutely important for you to be grateful that god has granted you a second chance to make things right and you don't know what what can go from 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 where you're at now the blessing can just it can look little now but your faithfulness will cause a level of increase and multiplication even further than what you lost so you know that is absolutely important hallelujah and i'm happy that you went there because the second chance after you have dominion then the yoke will be broken off your neck so dominion over the lessons of the mistakes that you learned before dominion over the mistakes that you've learned before after you've learned that and you've now put that into practice, this job may seem like nothing right now, but it has the potential to grow the scope for development. You're not seeing it now, you know, but the scope for development is there. The second marriage, yet they may be looking at the man and he's nothing like the first husband. He may be looking at the wife, he's, she's nothing like the first wife. And you think that you have not upgraded, but stay with God, stay with God, learn from your mistakes, work them, work in the revelation and in the wisdom and watch god move mm -hmm. so prophetess we're going back to you and i want to ask you for a word of encouragement a short word of encouragement for those who are tasked with the responsibility of helping others to move past their mistakes and regrets so this this is a a, a major thing because you know what you do can either make or break you know individuals Sometimes you hear, hear persons say that they have a testimony that the church never treat them well after they made mistakes and, you know, the different narratives. But it's important that when persons have blundered and made mistakes, that that level of love, 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 love is extremely important. I mean, if Jesus did not cast away the woman that was caught in adultery, we have no right to cast anyone away. You know, it's important that we correct individuals. And this is what Jesus did. Jesus just never said, you know, go on where you go. I don't condemn you. He said, go and sin no more. So although he forgave her, he addressed her sin. He, he highlighted her sin. So, you know, although persons have made mistakes, it's important that we, you know, talk to them and counsel them and comfort them and affirm them with grace and with love, assuring them that, listen, you can come back from this, you know, and still extend that level of love. You know, a lot of times persons think that, you know, after Afghan, you know, being a pastor for so long, you, you see and you hear a lot of stuff. Persons think that, you know, after they have made mistakes, that, you know, they should still be at the same post. They should still be doing what they're doing normally. 
and that's not scriptural. You know, there's a time where you have to really reframe. You made the mistake, reframe, you know, get back your stuff together, you know, get your mind back at the place and then, you know, let's move forward. You know, so when when individuals are moved from certain posts, you hear persons lashing and uh, lashing out against the church, lashing up, um, lashing out against leadership. But it is necessary for you to find back your place because what you'll be doing, you'll be leading persons and you're not you're not stable you'll, you'll be leading persons and there are things that in your life that really needs to be sorted out and really needs to be fixed so it's important for you to for us to correct individuals but do it in a spirit of love and also affirm them of god's word god is not finished with you you know god loves you he will never leave you he will never forsake you his plans that he has concerning you they are good uh, the bible says when you still you'll make your bed in hell he's there the bible say what he has started in you he will complete it you know you have to begin to encourage them and remind them of god's word and remind them of stories from the word of god that listen it's it's not over you have made mistake the bible said that peter denied christ three times but the bible still calls peter the pillar he was the one that was instrumental in bringing the gospel to, to different places. So although he made that mistake, he still got up and he was still Peter the apostle, the same apostle that got up on the day of Pentecost. And, you know, we know the story, a thousand, thousands were saved as a result of his ministry. So you have to affirm them, remind them of God's word and show them that level of love and compassion. I love it. And I love the fact that you went there because earlier we were telling them that in order to keep a relationship going, don't get stuck in the mistake. So not being stuck in the mistake is not the same as continuing as if nothing happened. You understand? It's not a case where you're being condemned and removed as a result of your mistake, but understand that if you're not at a place where you have to be restored, you can't keep pouring out. You can't keep pouring out. You need to step back and be filled again. And it means that taking a step back, building again your love walk with Christ, your relationship with God, nothing is wrong with that, guys. Absolutely nothing is wrong with that. And now when you've overcome that hurdle, you're now able to pour out. Understand that there are so many persons who operate as though nothing is going on and you pour out lust on people. You pour out unforgiveness on people. You pour out anger on people because we have not taken the time to step back hmm, and to deal with the matters of the heart. Crystal, can you just whisper a word of prayer for those who are you know, dealing with needing to bounce back? Um, so again, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to share on this platform and just to listen, um, you know, prophetess as usual is, it's always a blessing and you can hear the, the wisdom of God through, um, this conversation, you know, and as you said, with Esau, sometimes he's almost like one of the bad people in the Bible. Um, but you see how he has bounced back and, you know, he was wealthy and he had his family and all of that. And he was able to grant his brother favor later down. Um, so father, even now as we give you all the thanks and the praise for this conversation today mighty God that there is somebody that's listening that feels condemned that somebody feels guilty they feel ashamed um, whether because someone did something to them or because of their own sins or um, mistakes Lord but Father I pray that they will come into the saving the reminder of who they are in you mighty God a reminder of your grace and your mercy that has been extended upon them mighty God today Father I pray that they will not walk in condemnation they will not walk in um, defining themselves based on something that they have done mighty God or what has been done to them Father you says they are a righteous mighty God God. They are they are holy, mighty God. They they are they are victors, mighty God, more than conquerors. These are the things that you have declared upon us as your children, Lord. And I pray that they will walk into that, mighty God, Father. We honor you. Thank you for allowing us to pour out on this platform, Lord God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise and we give you glory. 
we thank you mighty god that the ministry of restoration is absolutely important in every church mighty god because mighty god we are not perfect mighty god your word declare mighty god there's none that's good no not one we need your grace daily we need your strength daily mighty god we need your wisdom daily and i pray that mighty god that you will equip leaders mighty god to effectively deal with situations mighty god where persons have fallen short mighty god and has truly missed the mark i pray mighty god the love that you demonstrated mighty god when you walked the earth mighty god you dealt with individuals that were bound you dealt with individuals mighty god that had a messy past mighty god and were in deep situation the bible said that you went you said you i must go area because mighty god you wanted to deal with the woman that had five husbands father i pray that in the name of jesus that the love that you have for your people that god you begin to download that in us mighty god that the, the height the depth the length mighty god of your love mighty god i pray that mighty god will even get a fraction of that mighty god so that we can demonstrate your heart to a broken world a world that is imperfect mighty god your word said for god's so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life i pray mighty god that you will give us patience mighty god would deal with to deal with individuals that have made the mistake i pray mighty god that you'll give us the grace mighty god to deal with it mighty god and you'll give us the wisdom mighty god i pray that mighty god that there will be a level of restoration mighty god on our part mighty god extending that to them mighty god so that they understand that my God you have not forgotten them and your love and your forgiveness is their portion I pray that we will be like the prodigal son mighty God like the prodigal's father that kept that party because his son returned the shepherd that leaves the 99 and go after the one give us your heart mighty God the way in which you see your people and the way in which you want to restore them you said to the woman caught in adultery where are your accusers and she said that they're all gone no one has thrown a, thrown a stone at me and you said to her neither do I I pray that mighty God we will not just lift our hands to judge and to condemn but to, to bring wholeness and restoration to persons that are broken and are hurting I pray that your love will be demonstrated through us as we put all leaders before you in Jesus name Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for your women servant, servants. Even as they have poured out wisdom, knowledge, understanding, fill them up again, even in the name of Jesus. God, we bless you for their ministries. We bless you for the grace that you have placed on their lives, even now. We thank you for every person that is watching who would have received a blessing. Someone has received confirmation. Someone has received release. Someone has received comfort in the name of Jesus. And so we thank you for what you're doing, what you've already done, and what you're about to do in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Stay blessed. Stay tuned. Talk soon.